Hello everybody, today we're gonna have a look at the Yeltech turn. If you haven't heard about Yeltech, I'm not sure if they pronounce Yeltech or Yeltex or whatever. They are a new company from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, and they give you the opportunity to build your own custom controllers. So they are really nicely done. They're not on the cheap side, but they are made out of wood and metal and feels really, really solid stuff. So if you go on the webpage, Yeltech, tech.com you find this factory system where you can choose from three sizes of controllers also you can choose the orientation where you intend to use it and then you can start adding different controls to it for example knobs or also joysticks faders all these things so you can really build your own thing also you can have your own layout in the background upload that and then when you're ready you can order it from their company and if you look in their store you find different ideas already and there is for example this really nice turn model which gives you many many options you have lots of lots of knobs and this is the model i have here and for that model I created a specific support script and with that we will see what we can do. For all the other controllers you can get from Yeltech, you can definitely use my generic Flexi, which is also part of Driven by Moss. And there are many tutorial videos for that on my YouTube channel. And this gives you the opportunity to map between to your hearts alike to your very special controller. But now let's dive in and look at the turn. And to configure your controller, Yeltech also provides a nice editor, which needs to be used from a browser. You cannot use any browser. You need to have a browser which supports MIDI. For example, here the Google Chrome browser does that. And there is a this kilowatt editor on the Yeltech side as well, which you can start and access. And there you can choose your connected controller. So I choose here the turn. And then you can choose the template file, which I provided for you coming with driven by Moss in the resources folder under Yeltech, you find the turn Yeltech and there you can open it and then send it to your device. So here in the configuration, you see all the knobs, you see all the buttons as well. And you can do some slight tweaks. For example, if you go here to the controls, what you could adjust, for example, if you don't like how the speed works on the relative controls, you could adjust here the different options you have to fix or acceleration. You could try if there is something which better suits your needs. But besides that, you should not touch that and the controls are all set like this to be used with a driven by Moss extension. So having started up Bitwig, we see the turn controller here also light up. There are some specific areas we need to understand first. So there are two main modes. There is one mixer mode for your tracks and there is one mixer mode specific for the drum machine. Also in these two different modes, we have a specific sequencer. So one is intended to record monophonic sequences with notes and the other one is intended to create a drum pattern. Also, we have these different areas here. So the upper part is used to change parameters. The middle section is fixed to the controlling the equalizer and the lower part is more for parameters and also for mixing. And the right part here, we have a transport part and here also these knobs are fixed to some absolute controls. Like here, we have here the master volume. We have the Q channel volume. So the volume of the metronome, for example, we have here the control to crossfade between the crossfade channels A and B and we can also set here the tempo to our hearts alike. I did limit it a bit so it makes sense to use it with absolute knob so it only goes from 60 up to 188. And yeah, I will talk about all these knobs. Instead, let's try to create something. Let's go here to the drum channel. So you switch between the drum and the track with that, these, that button. So here we have now the drum machine. And to activate here the drum sequencer, you click on the clips button. So clips toggles between the mixing view and the sequencer view. So let's create a new sequence. These two buttons, by the way, I use as combination keys. So the low one is a shift button and the upper one is here the select button. So with shift and record you create here a new clip 
and you see already the sequence running. And here you can select here the eight devices, but you can also access more. And these are also duplicated here. So because I always have a discussion, should the pads play or not if you select it? And now you have both. So here you can play the sound. You also see it records straight away. And here you can select the sound. So let's create something meaningful or just a bit random. You could also turn on the metronome and you can also quantize it a bit if your blade is not too good. Go to the next one. So here we have a snare. Hi-hat. Another is a nice thing we have for each of the steps, you can control a lot of different parameters. So to access the parameters, you press here the shift button and here you see 16 different parameters. So looking at this, you have transpose, mute, duration, velocity, the release velocity and so on. Let's maybe go for the gain, maybe make the first hi-hat a little bit louder. You can also go here for repeats. So you can say you want to have repeats here on a hi-hat. You could also change the panorama. So let's go a bit to the left, a little bit to the right to create more stereo effects. So here you toggle repeat on and off, and here you set the different speeds. These are the even ones. And here you have the uneven ones. You get the idea. You can also change here the resolution. So you can also work with different resolutions, not only 16th. And you can select here the different edit pages. You can also have longer clips than that one. You have here up to eight pages, which you can select as well. And then you can have here your normal mixer as well. So let's have a look at this uh, drum mixer. Let's play it. So you can go here to zero, have only the bass drum. Bring in a hi-hat. Bring in the snare. And you also have two sends and you have the panorama and you have here always access to the drum machine device. So you could also go for the filter. So these are also in excess. You can also hear mute and solo. And you can add here the two cents. So I have a delay on here. Set the delay. And the reverb. So much for the drum machine. Let's switch over to the normal mixer. So we're here now on the master. There is also another mode. You can also have the normal session mode. So in session mode, you have your clips as well, which you can start and run. And you can toggle that between not only the clips, but also scenes. So here in that mode, we have now the scenes. You have up to 32 scenes, which we can start. So this starts the second scene. This one is the first scene. And if you switch back to that, you see norm your normal clip. So you could start that clip as well. And there's also a stock clip here for that track, which you can also 
use one command on the layout. So this is normally the panorama, which is controlled up there, but it uses this normal display. So it's not this panorama LED layout because currently this cannot be controlled via MIDI to change that. So I have it now set to all of them, but I hope that there will be an update coming from Yaltech. So we can also switch here the panorama, but this will also now control here the panorama of your track. Switch over here to the second track, which contains a simple polysynth. And here let's have a look at the monosynth, which works pretty similar. The only difference is that you don't select different sounds, but you have a note on each step, which you can move up and down with the first parameter. So let's have a look at that. Let's also create here a clip for that. Let's start the whole scene. And now we can also enter the sequencer here. And you can also change the length uh, of the clip. So if you go with shift, you see the length. So we can shorten it down a bit, the first row, for example. still have here also the device in excess. So here we have again also panorama, the two sends and the device. So we can also add a bit of delay. Here you can select the device you'd like to edit. We go back to Polysynth and you can also select here the pages. So we go to the filter page of the Polysynth. And also here you have access to the 16 different parameters. Uh, but the difference here is you can have also access to the scale. So you can set your specific scale. So all the turning you do can be in a perfect scale, which you can also turn off. So with these two buttons here, you switch a scale, minor, Dorian, and so on. We're currently here in major. And here you can toggle to chromatic. So then you can also access all the nodes if you like to do that. And here you select the base node. So we're currently here in C, but you can also select all the other base nodes available. Here again is the same to change the resolution. And here you can also access the different pages if you want to create longer clips. So, and also here we have here the different parameters which you can change. Again, here there is a velocity, duration, all these things. So you can also create a little bit of a longer step if you want to do so. You can use here, for example, the gain for some accentuation. Do some repeats.
Okay, so I guess you get the idea. I did not yet show the EQ. So if you go here on the EQ, it will automatically insert an EQ plus for you, which you can use. So for example, I showed that also in a previous video with a launch control that you can quickly also use this as a low pass filter or high cast filter if you set it up like this. And here, for example, you could create here the high pass and also do it like this and use it as well. Let's hear it. So also that is possible. There are much more combinations I will not dive into, but always refer to the manual, which is included in a Driven by Morse download. So the Driven by Morse manual contains all the different things you can do with the buttons. And uh, you can also read that in advance if you're thinking about such a device. And as you hopefully see in the video, this is a totally sturdy device. It's only shaking because yeah, I have it on a very, very small laptop stand, which is a bit shaky to do the video. but this is all done nicely with with wood yeah and you can also change here the background layout if you want to have something else here and it's a definitely a valuable device and if you're in a market for something that's definitely a pro tip and and the focus of that which you might have seen i hope is definitely target towards the live use improvising with sequences but could also be nice for the studio if you would like to work in such a way for example, as Richard Horton likes to work, and uh, I think he will love that if he sees that. And yeah, I hope you like it, dig it, enjoy it, and tell me down in the comments what you think about this device. And until next time, make some funky music.